not too late, but I want to bring Fred up, and he's going to talk about his experience with Inter. Oh, thank you, Joe. I've had five interns in the last 10 years of my business. Four of them worked out very, very well and have gone on to do incredibly well following their internships and in their employment. Um, I see the University of Wyoming internship program as being probably the best screening device I know of for employers. Um, in the 40 years I've been in business, I've had lousy luck with running ads, contacting employment agencies, or recently trying to get employees on the internet. Uh, the interns have worked out the best for me by far. Um, <clears throat> the university should have three to two to four years to observe their students. And the one that John Benson sent me about a year ago, he had observed for a while, called me up and said, this is one of the brightest guys in our program. He wants to get in the financial services industry. Would you do an internship with him? And I agreed, and it's been a great experience and profitable uh, for both myself, my company, and certainly Reed Rudkin. Um, we can get high quality job candidates through good collegiate internship programs, smart young people that are willing to pay their dues. And I'll come back to what I mean by paying the dues in just a second. Um, it gives me a chance to see how they relate for about three months, because we do summer internships, how they relate with the other employees. And what's even more important is do the clients like, in my case, do my clients like them? Because if the clients don't like them, I probably shouldn't hire them. And it's a lot easier to see that when they're interns than after you've hired them. Okay. Um, the internship, three or four months that they work for us in the summertime, gives me an opportunity to see what their value really will be to my company before I hire them. Um, now, I've never paid an intern. If they want to come do an internship with my company over the years, my feeling is they're getting a wealth of information. It takes a lot of my time to give them that information. When they show up that first Monday morning to do their internship, they're not worth 10 cents to our company. They don't know anything. They don't know what to do. And all they do is consume my time. But it's well worth that time if they're qualified and assuming that we're, you know, it, it's going to come to a good end or a good conclusion. So. In addition to the investment I have, um, I have in them in imparting my time, we give them a lot of knowledge, and they're able to determine whether they're even in the right field or do they really want a career in the money management business, is what, which is what we do. And they get to see it really in action on a day-to-day -day basis. They get to see the exhilarating highlights of it. They get to see the, the worst thing that's going to happen when the client that just lost some money calls up and wants to know why, how I could be that stupid to invest in that stock just before it declined. I mean, they really get to see what's going on. And it's, they're not going to see that otherwise. Okay. Now, the advantage to the intern is that this is their best chance to work with and learn about what really matters to become successful in a real world situation. And if you get high quality interns coming into your program and you provide them with a high quality organization and good information and good education, you'll have good outcomes. And they will go on to do well because they get off to a good start. Uh, my expectations for the interns are very, very high. And I tell them that before we accept them as an intern. I tell them I am going to expect more from you than you've ever had expected before, but you're going to be more well rewarded if you measure up. And that's what I mean by paying their dues. 
if they think that I should pay them to educate them and give them that kind of an opportunity, if they're not willing to come out on their own, pay their own expenses from wherever they come from, and work hard for three months in the summer to learn and to get the experience and to show that on their resume, then they don't have the horsepower that I'm looking for in my company. Okay. Let me just very quickly give you, because I'm about out of time, the track record of some of the interns. One is a young man named Jeff Osher. Uh, he did an internship with us in the summer of 1999. He came from the University of, o of Miami at Ohio. His father was a client, asked if he could come out and do an internship. Um, he did that in the summer of 1999. He, was, he had job offers from Goldman Sachs and Montgomery Securities and came to work for us because he saw our culture. He'd already done internships at Goldman Sachs and Montgomery. I never thought that he would choose us as opposed to Goldman Sachs. I probably wouldn't when I was his age. I'd have wanted Goldman Sachs on my resume, not the Dowd Company in Casper, Wyoming, okay? But he came, he worked for four years, he now runs the Harvest Small Cap Fund in San Francisco. I'll let you guys do the math. Well, while he was with me in those four years, I looked up his salaries today, he made $672,000 in four years. Uh, working with our clients, bringing in clients, and getting a share of the fees for providing good, good management. I gotta tell you, the first week he was there, he came in, he said, Fred, Fred, I gotta show you my watch list. He said, these are stocks you should buy. And I said, Jeff, relax. You know, you're not even out of college yet. Well, three weeks later, he asked if I'd looked at his watch list. It was up about 60% since he first showed it to me. That got my attention, we started buying him. He is the smartest tech guy in the country, uh, and that all comes from him, not from me. But he runs almost $400 million today at this hedge fund that was rated the number one fund in the country in 2009. It's a small cap fund. Uh, his compensation schedule on that fund is 1% of the money under management and 20% of the profit. He's never had a loss year, and he's at averaged about 18%. The other intern I want to tell you about last is Reed Rudkin, who is the young man that the University of Wyoming sent me. Reed was born in Casper. He's the eldest of three children. His father graduated from the University of Wyoming with a master's degree in geology. Uh, he currently runs a construction company. That's Reed's dad. His mom is a pastor for the largest church in Casper, Highland Park Community Church. Reed has strong family ties to the Casper community, uh, both through his immediate family and his extended family. He really comes from an outstanding family, and I think that's important. Okay. He graduated from high school with a 3.6 grade point average. He decided to attend the University of Wyoming. Uh, he attended on a full track and field scholarship. He was awarded the highest academic level of the Hathaway Scholarship. He will graduate this spring with a degree in finance and economics and come to work full-time for us. And when he does come to work for us full-time, he will have some ownership in the company. He will work harder as an owner than he will as an employee. I wouldn't give anybody ownership and part ownership in my company if they hadn't paid some dues and proved themselves. Reed proved himself last summer beyond a shadow of a doubt. Okay. Uh, he's participated in a lot of many, uh, many extracurricular activities. He was been in track and field as well as the manager of the track and field team. Uh, he's participated in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and Campus Navigators and worked as a volunteer for the Salvation Army. Uh, he completed volunteer work in Mexico and South Africa. And I think that's important. If people make good money, they need to share it. And when I see a young man that's already sharing, when he's not making good money, that counts for a lot in my company. At age 10, Reed started dabbling, kind of dabbling in the stock market. At 17, he started managing some money for his parents and himself, and he did quite well with it. 
while attending the University of Wyoming, he's continued to challenge himself through research, classwork, reading and studying, respected financial gurus to learn what it takes to become successful in the field of money management and to gain an age. And I'm really looking forward to his graduation when he gets to the Dowd Rudkin Company full time. I like, I'm in closing, I would I like to say that at 73, I'm probably too old to still be working. And at 21, Reed's too young, but on the average, we're just right. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for your time. And if I can assist you in any way finding full time employees or interns, um, my cards are on the table and I'm happy to help. And I would assume you were working for a large company, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think it depends on the size of your company, the, what the internship consists of, what the, you know, just balancing, you know, you want to go, if, if the student needs to make money, and even with the Hathaway, I think people sometimes think they don't need to pay for college, the Hathaway covers tuition if you're on the full Hathaway. So a lot of our students still need to make some money, but I think it would depend on what you're asking them to do and you know kind of a comparable wage for a, for someone starting into the field not at this level but just something so that you know if you want to pay them they feel that they're making something with that but but I'm sure um, I know we have statistics for interns that are hired a lot of ours though are the big corporations but I think we can get you some information to help you with that any other questions I know Greg's getting closer to me. That means it's almost there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, ah. Well, I really want to thank you for your time and attention. This is a great group of people to work with. They will do well in their futures. Um, they're just a little different than the previous generation, but I guess that's what makes them a new generation. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, they do. They don't. They don't understand corporate culture or structure sometimes. Yeah, they want a lot of responsibility <laughs> and a title and a car, no. <laughs> yeah, they do, yeah, they have, as long as they get their birthday off, the CEO could wait maybe a year or two, so. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you.